Okay, here we go. It's time to start the webinar. So hello everyone and welcome to the webinar. I'm very glad uh, that you have joined us. Um, today, uh, the company presenting here is Amorim. They're the world's largest cork producer and one of the dynamic Portuguese multinationals in the world. They, um, in almost 150 years of, of undisputed leadership in the industry, uh, this company has distinguished itself by quality, innovation and excellence and vision. Um, today, they are going to present to you the R&D applied to wine stoppers. And our speaker here today is Michael Gabral. He is the director of R&D, who is going to tell you more about this topic. Uh, just a couple of things um, to keep in mind during the presentation. Uh, the duration of the webinar is maximum 40 minutes, but after the webinar, you are more than welcome uh, to visit the booth uh, of Amorim uh, for more information. And also uh, during the webinar, you can send your questions and messages uh, to Michel uh, at the top right hand corner in the bottom with the chat icon. So you can find it there and he will be able to answer all your questions after his presentation. And um, now I'm handing it over to you, Michel. The stage is okay. yours. Thank uh, you. Have a nice webinar, everyone. Thank you, Matilda. So thank you, uh, for everybody, for joining us. So what I'm going to talk is about leading cork business throughout R&D and innovation. Uh, and I will start with this very simple picture where you can see a fantastic cork coming out from a bottle of wine. Probably for the majority of you, uh, this cork is just a lid of a bottle that has been put there in order to close the bottle neck and the bottle itself. But actually, uh, with this lid, that is the cork stopper, there is much more than just a lid. So first of all, it's a lid that has to uh, close bottles like Petrus, one of the most famous wines in the world, or a regular Rosé, uh, Mateus Rosé from Portugal, which is a good wine, but is a regular one. However, the closure has to keep the quality of Mateus Rosé as the quality of Petrus. Another point is that other type of beverages must be closed with the cork stoppers. Now we are talking about sparkling wines. The very famous Veuve Clicquot bottle and the quality of this wine must be kept um, properly and entirely. And Asti uh, from, from Italy, actually, which is a regular uh, Spumanti. So these two wines, which have completely different characteristics and different qualities, the lid must, the cork stopper basically, must keep their quality. Again, another type of beverage very different from these first groups, which are the spirits. With the spirits, you have very different challenges that you have to ask to the cork stopper to fulfill. So when we start, we think that we were talking just about the lid of a bottle. Be careful, because it's a lid of a bottle that is going to deal with very different type of wines on their style, like still wine, uh, sparkling wine, spirits, but also on the uh, quality, very different quality of the wines should be uh, maintained with this cork. Then the lid called cork stopper is fighting in the market against alternative closures. And these alternative closures are here, as you can see in your left hand side, synthetic stoppers, and in your right hand side, the screw caps. So we need to uh, show to our clients how different we are related with this, these different types of uh, alternative closures. But then within the Coke stoppers, we have very different type of closures. In your left hand side, you have the normal and um, natural cork. Then 
a natural cork which has too much holes and so it was collimated on their holes by cork dust. Then the third one is the twin top where you have a body of agglomerate cork uh, granules with two discs, one in the top and another one in the bottom in order to make the contact with the wine. Then you have microagglomerate corks, which are nowadays, uh, well, growing up in the market significantly. And then you have the bar top corks, uh, corks used normally for spirits, which are there to close, um, not just completely to seal. And then the champagne or sparkling corks, where you have different types also. You have a agglomerate body with one, two discs, or just one disc, or even without discs, depending on the quality of the wine. So big differences, big challenges that we have to face with a cork stopper that is going to close a bottle of wine. And so when we start here to do the research and development on cork stoppers, we divide our action in five objectives. The first one, improve the quality of the products that we produce. The second one, improve the efficiency of the processes used to produce the closures. The third one, in understand the interaction between the products and the beverages, which I do think that is very important. Then <clears throat> the fourth one is develop new products and then develop new processes. So I will show you one or two slides per point in order to, for you to understand how um, we do research on closures and how we, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> how we improve our product with research. Improve the quality of products. I gave you here two different examples. In your left hand side, you have a cork that do not, do not uh, seal properly the bottle because it leaks, as you can see here. And it leaks, why? Because it has a, ch a, ca a channel produced by a warm hole. And this, ho this warm was, this warm hole ho was produced in, in the tree. So, why, um, so we, with this warm hole, we cannot have a proper sealing. So how can we deal with the situation? Look carefully with this X-ray of the cork. You have here a big hole, which is not very difficult to see by the eye, by the human eye. And here you have a very small hole because this one was collimated with cork wood. So, in your, in the picture in the middle, it, you have the machine that we have developed to deal with the situation. Before, we were having conveyors, workers from one side and the other, looking the corks passing, and if they could see very big holes, they separate by hand the cork. But if by chance both holes were collimated, we could not see it, and so the cork will pass. Now, we develop the machine that actually we patent the machine. And this machine is using chambers and individual chambers for the, for the corks. Each cork came into a chamber. Then this part will close into the corks, and so a situation similar to this one happens. We inject from one side compressed air. Here is the cork. And if we have air coming out from the other side, if the manometer moves the needle, that means that this cork is a potential leak cork. And so will be rejected by the machine. So the machine has two channels of way out. One accept, the other one reject. So look how we improve the quality of products, separating from the ones, from the whole corks, separating the ones which do not leak. And nowadays, 
all natural quarks are treated by this system. Another example of uh, improve the quality of products is uh, this one related with sparkling wine. Here you have two corks. This is the normal sparkling wine cork that you obtain after extracting from the bottle, which is a cork with the fantastic mushroom shape. But here you have a cork after being extracted, which was not able to make the mushroom shape. Why? Because this disc was not able to expand. This has no influence in the evolution of the wine. Why? Because the ceiling is made with this part and this part is expanding in the normal way. So no problem about the ceiling effectiveness of this cork. But when you extract a cork like this from a bottle of champagne, you don't like because it does not appear in the mushroom traditional shape as this one. So we did a hard study on this. We look, first of all, the reasons why this happened. And we realize this was a collaboration with the Institute of uh, Agronomy in Portugal, in Lisbon. We realize that discs that do not expand have a ratio between two structural compounds which is different from this discs. So we are talking about subrin and linen. These are two structural compounds from cork. And in this case, subrin, the ratio subrin linen is positive, meaning that we have more subrin than linen. But in this disc, the ratio of subrin linen is negative, meaning what? That we have higher amount of linen. So first of all, the reason for the, uh, the lack of expansion is the amount of linen. So the first answer was made, uh, was obtained. But now we need to do something in order to separate these discs from the others. And to do that, what we did was, by chance, linen actually is more heavy than cyberin. So we thought that by weighting the discs, we could separate the ones which has a ratio of, which has the amount of linen higher than the amount of subrin. Actually, at this moment, we have already in the ground uh, uh, balances used to weight discs in order to separate the ones which have a higher weight above 1.2 grams than the others. And like that, we do, we, we um, uh, solutionate the appearance of this problem. So this is another very good example how we improve the quality of products using this type of solution, weighting discs in order to separate the ones which are really heavy and so they have higher amount of linen and so they do not expand like this one. Improve the efficiency of the processes. I gave you another example here. So the second objective is improve the efficiency of processes. And this is the first step of the cork production process. These are cork planks that have been extracted from a tree. These cork planks before they were boiled in a big tank that uses five pallets of cork wood altogether. And then in the top, we put a compressor in order to keep the cork compressed during one hour with 97 in, in water at 97 degrees Celsius, what we call the boiling of the cork. Why we boil the cork? Because cork will receive water and like that expands. And expanding, we have the thickness enough to punch the cork. So it's a obvious uh, step that we need to do in the production process of a cork stopper. Now we do a boiling in a very different way. This is in your, uh, sorry, in your right hand side, this is the 
right way, and the, nowadays they, uh, how do you do the boiling? Instead of five pallets of corkwood in these tanks, you just use two pallets of corkwood. Using two pallets of corkwood, you do not need to have a compressor because these lids, these are the lids of the tank, they open and close like that. And so the cork wood inside the two pallets, they will not be compressed during boiling. So the water is passing through the planks much easier than this in this, in, in this system. So making like that, we have a much homogeneous expanding of the cork wood. And so the boiling, we can produce much more corks from the boiling than we did before, because we have a much more homogenizing in the cork expanding. Secondly, with this system, we also have one thing adapted here, which is a, a, a system there, we cannot quite well see it in, in this tank, where we filter the water passing out from the tank. Because when we finish the boiling one hour at 97 degrees Celsius, when we finish, the water needs to be to go into the tanks that are back to this one in order to open the lids and to take out the cork pallets. And so the water, when it passes into there, is going to be filtered. And like that, contaminants on the water will not be transmitted into the next set of pallet, of cork pallets, because they have been retained in the filter. Look how we can improve efficiency of the processes. By the end of the presentation, I will show you more. Then another very interesting uh, subject, which we are looking for is understanding the interaction between our cork products and the beverages. As you can imagine, the corks, a cork stopper in a bottle of wine, imagine here, a cork stopper here, assuming that this is wine, which is not the case, a cork stopper needs to, first of all, seal properly, then allow in somehow oxygen exchanges, and third, allow a balanced wine evolution. So the first thing we did, we were talking already about the proper sealing to avoid wine, liquid or wine leakage. We have talked already about that subject, but the second subject is the permeability, oxygen permeability. We do not know before, we did not know what were the oxygen permeability into the wine. And in a PhD in Bordeaux that we send a student in order to answer that question to us, we ask the student, look, with your PhD, we want to know what is the kinetics of oxygen entrance in a bottle facing different type of closures. This was the main question of his PhD. And here you have the answer. Here you have a screw cap, saran tin. As you can see, up to 60 months, it's completely tight. In the opposite side, you have nomocoque. In this case, Select 300. So it's a plastic stopper which allows oxygen to come in during time in a linear way. And then you have natural cork stopper, which is the yellow curve, and a microglomerate cork stopper, which is neutral cork, which is the green curve. And as you can see, the different curves, they show a different kinetics of oxygen entrance in a bottle. Let's going to look about the kinetics of the cork stoppers. So the yellow and the green curve. As you can see, in the beginning, we have an increase of oxygen coming into the bottle. 
But then it seems that it reaches a plateau. And actually it is like that, that happens. So this first part corresponds to when you squeeze the cork. The cork is made by empty cells and these cells are, are full of air. So when you squeeze the cork to introduce it, it in a bottleneck, you are compressing significantly these cork cells. And so the air will tries to escape. It's going to pass from one cork cell into the other, into the other, into the other, at the, up to the moment where it arrives into the exterior and it goes up outside the bottle or it goes down inside the wine. This is the first moment which reaches around three to six months. And then once the air comes out, the compression, the pressure in the cork cells is much less. So we have much less oxygen coming into the bottle. Practically nothing up, and nothing up to five years in bottle. With the neutral cork, you have exactly the same figure with a difference. The amount of oxygen coming in the beginning, this part here, is going to be much less. Why? Because the microglomerate cork, first of all, has glue, and the amount of oxygen is not coming out from the glue, first point. And secondly, because the density of the cork is much higher. So when we squeeze, the amount of oxygen coming out is much smaller than in the metal cork. That is one of the most important reasons why we have actually a different um, profile of the wines when we use a natural cork or when we use a microagglomerate cork. The profile is much more in the oxidative side with a natural cork than with a the uh, uh, microglomerate cork where you have a more reductive, reductive profile. In your right hand side, you have what is the action of a cork in a bottle. And so as you, from you, the left hand side, you understand that we have oxygen in the beginning, three months, more or less, and then practically almost nothing. And then we have also compounds, phenolic compounds, that are going to be released from the cork into the wine. The amount of these compounds released is not very big. And it's not very big, why? Because the surface of contact of the cork into the wine is very small. However, a permanent soaking is happen. And so happening the permanent soaking you obviously will have some extraction. And so here you have these compounds coming out and being extracted into the wine. What these compounds are going to, what role these compounds are going to have in the wine? These compounds came in, coming from the cork will go into the wine, making very complex reactions with the wine matrix, producing bigger compounds, as you can see here, bigger compounds, more complex compounds, because they are going to react with the phenolics from the wine with the help of the oxygen, but they are going to produce bigger compounds, which are more stable. And so being more stable, these compounds are going to contribute to the stabilization of the color of the wine and to the reduce of the bitterness. And so this is the reason why a natural cork stopper is indicated for wines that will stay for a long period of time in bottle because they allow a balanced wine evolution over time. And these effects, we do not feel it quite well in the beginning, we feel it later on, after three, four years in bottle. So this is another big subject of research, understanding the interaction of, between the cork stoppers and the beverages. 
that they are going to close. We continue doing a lot of research on this subject. Let's go to see in these slides what we have said before. This is a wine from Bordeaux, a white wine with 32 months in bottle. And this is a red wine from Valle du Rhone with 33 months in bottle. The first wine, the left one side wine, they, it was closed by a natural cork stopper, Twin Top Evo and DM30. And look how the DM30 make uh, the profile of the wine much more reductive than the others. I'm not talking about a wine a defect in the wine. I'm talking about a different profile. And this different profile is actually completely different from this one, from natural cork and twin top evil, where we have more oxygen. And so the profile is more, as I said before, in an oxidative way. Here, we have a natural cork stopper with a microglomerate DM10. After 33 months, we can see that the overall quality, aromatic intensity, and aromatic quality of the wine is actually much better with the natural cork than with the DM. And why that? Well, because the wine that receives more oxygen in the beginning from the natural cork than from the DM, obviously this oxygen allows a much better balanced wine evolution. So these are two examples of what I said before. Let's continue with the presentation talking just this slide about the development and new products. You can imagine that a cork stopper into a bottle, probably we do not have too much new products to develop. However, with our research, we were able to develop and launch Elix Cork. Elix Cork, it is an agglomerate cork that has a body and a head, like a bar top cork. And this cork can be inserted in a normal way because all the cork, the head and the body will be compressed to be inserted in the bottle. And then just this part is going to come into the bottleneck. Inserting this part in the bottleneck, you will keep this head outside and so this head allow you to open and close the bottle like this. So in the beginning, we need this, uh, how do you say that, this uh, rings here internally, threads, these threads internally, in order to help the extraction. But now we don't need any more this type of bottles we can do it in the normal bottles. The sealing is very good. The wine evolution up to three years uh, is very good. And so this is a cork that do not need a screw cap to be extracted. It's a cork stopper for still wine that do not need uh, uh, um, a cork screw to be extracted. So this is an example of a new product that we have developed. So now develop new development of new processes. So we were talking about improving previous processes. Now we will talk about developing new processes. And this new process is called ND Tech. What ND Tech means? Non-detectable technology. ND Tech, it's a system that we have developed and we have installed in the, in the ground to analyze cork stoppers for a compound called TCA. TCA is the trichloroanisole and is this molecule responsible for this beautiful lady making, making this terrible face. Why? Because the wine it has a mold, a moldy taste. 
and this moldy taste is actually produced by TCA. TCA can come from the wine, because the wine was contaminated before with it, or can come from the box stoppers. So in order to solve it, we try to make the anti-tech. In these two graphs, you can see the TCA evolution of cork stoppers in the United States. All corks that we produce are sent to the United States, they are analyzed by ETS laboratories. ETS laboratories analyze the corks and they publish the results. And these are the last graphs they published. And as you can see, from 2001 up to 19, we have a tremendous reduction of TCA, around 98% of TCA reduction, which is a tremendous number. So we are very confident about the corks that we sell. However, when we, sorry. However, we are not worried with the majority of the corks, but in the middle of a lot, you can find one, two, three corks that can be contaminated and even highly contaminated. That was the reason why we developed the project ND Tech that starts in 2008. We've built up the first prototype, a second prototype, and then an industrial machine, which was able to separate corks above two nanograms per liter and the others. I'm going to show a video with that kind of uh, machine. So we feather the machine individually, cork by cork, and the corks are going to be inserted in this pre-incubation system. The pre-incubation has a revolver inside, which is able to keep, which has 16 holes. So the core comes in, is incubated, and then the revolver moves on. After being pre-incubated, the cork is inserted in an analytical chamber, and here it is analyzed. This cork has non-detectable, so no TCA. So the cork will be sent into the good conveyor. But this cork has TCA, as you can see here. And so having TCA, the cork will be separated into the bad conveyor. So it's like that, that we analyze uh, TCA cork by cork. In 2015, November 2015, we reach the 0.5 nanograms per liter. So we were able to analyze corks, not at the limit of two nanograms per liter as the machine before, but at the 0.5 nanograms per liter. That is the reason why the system is called ND-TEC because non-detectable means below 0.5 nanograms per liter. After reaching this goal, we decided to implement the system in the ground, in the, in the factory. And we did it, and we decided to validate it independently. So we called Geisenheim University from Germany and the Australian Wine Research Institute from Australia to come here to make the sampling they want in order to verify that the corks produced in these machines are not detected corks. Look, the conclusion of the report made by Geisenheim University is this. None of the sample cork stops stoppers analyzing this investigation have concentrations of release of TCA above 0.5. So it was validated by them. Here, the same conclusion from Australian Wine Research Institute. They said that this validation to be 100% successful in identifying corks contamination contaminated with TCA above 0.5. So validated also um, by AWRI. So, what we have in the field is this. This is the NDTEC 1.0, where we have 10 lines with 60 gas chromatography machines in there. This corresponds to an investment of 10 million euros, and we have 15 seconds per analysis. So each cork is analyzed during 15 seconds. 
In 2019, we were able to produce 57 million natural corks analyzed by this method. So the called NDTEC corks. We hope in 2020 produce 65 million corks in these machines. How? Improving the performance and the productivity of the machines, not touching in the time of analysis. However, 57 million corks that we sell last year was not enough. And so we developed the Anditech 2.0, which is here. And this Anditech 2.0, it's a machine that gain a lot from what we learn in the first one. So as you can see, we have a feeder but we feed the machine in a vertical way. Then we have a, a pre-incubation, which is bigger. Then we have the corks coming out, lots of chromatographic changes. And then the corks are going to be inserted in this lid, which is the lid of an analytical chamber. And then they are going to be analyzed and facing the result, they are going to be rejected or accepted in a group, a different group. We spent 2.5 million euros with the Anditech 2.0. We have 4.5 production lines, which means 18 chromatography machines. And we hope with 15 seconds per analysis, reach the 10 million uh, natural corks during 2020. We have already 3 million, euros, 3 million corks produced. So Anditech for natural cork stoppers has been made. And now we decide to go further to sparkling corks, to champagne corks. So the champagne corks were analyzed in this prototype in order to see if everything is okay. We agree at internally completely the soak method with the Anditech. And then with three wineries in Champagne and one winery in French Aquarta, we validate and we approve the corks. Uh, and so we approve the NDTEC. And so we install one line of 1.5 lines. So one line corresponds to four machines and then another line which is there with two machines. So six gas chromatography machines. And the difference is that we need to orient the corks in order to have the discs upwards, as you can see here. And then we incubate just the discs. We do not incubate the body, the agglomerate body. As you see, the agglomerate body stands outside, stays outside. So we hope this year to produce something like 5 million corks, guarantee ND Tech. So these are the top, top, top corks that Amory produces. Okay, so this is the ND Tech corks for the high top level. But as you, uh, if you were at, uh, um, uh, with, with attention, you could see that we, we are talking about 75 million corks for natural, uh, for natural corks, so for steel wines, and 5 million corks for champagne. So for steel wines, we have to, to say, and what about the other corks? And for the other corks, we developed the eradication project. And with the eradication project, we produce in a different period of time. We have an objective of 99% not detected and 1% less than one nanogram per liter. Here are the results obtained with the tests, contaminated corks before treatment and corks after treatment, which fulfill completely the spec. And this treatment is in a batch treatment. So it's not individual, it's in a batch. With this machine, we have 15,000 corks per machine here. And now we have 25 corks per machine. Look what we have in 2019. We have already produced by the eradication project 15.6 million corks. That starts with 97.9% of TCA not detected and 99.6 after, after treatment and the same values in 2020. These results are up to March. This year, we are going to install 24 machines of VSR, 
which is the eradicated machines. And these machines will treat all the production of natural quartz. The last slide shows you the a reference. This is a reference lot, a very highly contaminated lot that we decided to, treat, to put in bottles. And after six months, we analyzed for TCA. And as you can see, we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six bottles highly contaminated. With this lot, highly contaminated lot, as I noticed to you, treated by the system, after six months, we just have one bottle with 1.1, which is probably almost not detectable. And more, the number of samples here, the bottles searched here for TCA, were more than the double of this year. So the eradication project will bring us into a situation of guaranteeing not attacking TCA in 99% of the of the cogs, which is a tremendous improvement for the future. So this is what I have to share with you. Thank you very much for your time. And I think that we are in time, isn't it? So if you want to make any questions, please do not hesitate it writing down in the shot, I guess. Is there any question? No? Okay. So in that case, I thank you very much for your presence. Thank you. Bye.